Hi! Welcome to another episode of the Nitty Digit Podcast. I am your host, Jay, and yay! So if you are new, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. It means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, oh my goodness, another episode. So I'm, I'm trying to make, now that I'm not having to worry about space and, um, worrying about, worrying, you know, worrying about space and making sure I have enough storage and going to iTunes, I can now podcast on a regular basis, but, um, I was going to, last weekend, we weren't going to, I couldn't podcast because... I got a kitty. So she she's hiding under the bed. She's a nocturnal vampire kitty, so she's sleeping right now. I tried to coax her out earlier and actually this is the second recording. Because I, I I was podcasting in a different angle and a different area and I just didn't like the lighting and I overshared too, so I just deleted it and I'm starting all over again. So, you didn't get a chance to see her then either. She just kept wandering around the room. But now she's just officially under the bed, sleeping, saying, leave me alone, human. So, we won't get a teddy sighting today. Um, and the professor is out, so I can record. Um, so, yeah. So, the reason why I keep changing locations is, like last time I told you, we're, we're kind of, we're, he's slowly moving in. And right now... Um, he brought all of his books in, so we've tried to put them all in the bookshelves we have now, but we still need to move two huge bookshelves. We need a trailer and whatnot, we're waiting. Um, my dad's helping out with that, so, um, and we both just are, we're, you know, working two jobs and my dad's busy as well, so we won't be doing it until May. Um, so yeah, that's the reason why I didn't podcast last weekend. And then, um, I'm not going to be podcasting the weekend after because it's the professor's birthday. Um, so we, we're not going to, he, he doesn't want to do anything too, too much because he's, he's poor, poor guy's tired. He, he really just wants a low key, just get together with friends and just, you know, yeah. You know. So, but once... Once May hits, and depending on work schedule, there should be a podcast episode every day. Every, not every day, no, every week. Um, week or so. Week or two weeks. So it won't be as sporadic as it has been for a couple months. So, yay! <sighs> Alright, so let's go into what is not on the needles. So, now this is the second time I'm doing it, so it may be faster. This is the Irish Mesh Cow that I did. Ah, uh, much better lighting. I think I tried to do it in front of, so we have now, I now, well, we both now have a green chair, and I thought it would be nice to do it in front of the, the, in front of the balcony door, but the lighting was horrible, so. This is the Irish Mesh Cow. See, now you can see it. You can definitely see it. Much better lighting. And, let's see, it's this. There you go. I haven't blocked it, of course, and I haven't weaved in the ends, which I plan to do after the book us. Um, this is, again, the Irish Mesh Cow. It's a free pattern. You can find it on Ravelry. And um, it is done in Blue Moon Fiber Arts. Socks that rock lightweight. And this is the color is Splotchy McSplotchy Pants. I don't ha I had the yarn. And I put it away, and I just don't feel like taking it out. But basically, I had a good amount to do one of those Franken, Frankenstein socks, you know, where you use all your scraps. So, and I did this in a US 7 millimeter, uh, US, US 7, I don't know the millimeters, in my high, high shirts. And again, this is the Irish Mesh Cow on Ravelry. You can see, you can just kind of see. This kind of thing. I want to find where it was. There you go. So you can kind of, you can wear it like this. Of course, I again need a block. So you can wear it like this, or you can twist it and make it a nice, 
<laughs> Scrunchy. Yeah? Like that. Mm -hmm. Take it away like that. You know? Yeah. It's nice one. I like it. I'm very happy. I'm kind of... I, I, I was disappointed with my first cow earlier. The, the one with the cashmere of all things, right? But it was just... It was too high and it was too small, you know? I like the nice long that you can twist so you can be like, Look, it's a big yarny necklace. Or you can twist it, you know, and make it nice and, you know, you know. So, again, have to block it, but you can kind of see. There you go. So that is what's off the needles. I've been able to, the reason why it's so, it, it was done really quickly is because this has been my traveling knitting, and I've switched from doing the train to the bus which means I have more more time it is longer but I get to sit so while Bart most of the time I was standing or being really scrunched together and it's just it wasn't conducive to knitting so buses are more conducive for knitting so there you go what is still on my needles well so the hundred you know the 198 yards so this one, I've only done two rows, so I won't be covering this one. I was knitting this while eating breakfast and watching Hannibal. Which if you haven't watched yet, I do have to say, sorry, there's something on the table. Um, it's definitely very dark. Just more than you. Very dark. And I've been binge watching it, and that's not a good idea. Never a good idea. It's very dark, as I said. All right, but I have been also working on. See again, much better lighting here. I, I just need to give up and just do it right here while the books are in. So that's the reason why I'm podcasting here. Is there's books, where I used where I would sit. So it's just it's not convenient. So. At this very moment, we're going to podcast here. So this is the Sala Cow, which is on Nitty.com. You can find it on Ravelry or on Nitty. And this is US 5s and US 10. So it's every row is knit with a difference. So this is my US 5, Knitter's Pride. And then this is the signature needle, this 10. And, um, again, this is Blue Moon, Socks That Rock, Lightweight, and Cozy, cozy Fierce and Dirty Orange. So you could see, there you go. You could see the label better back in the other one, in the other place, but. Alright. So, this is how much yarn. I still have. I, I, I still have a lot to do. Um, I'm still in the increases. But you, you, you notice something? So, when I was here, it was seed stitch. You see? When you... But then there was a block of where it looks like stockinette stitch, right? And now I'm back to seed stitch. And I don't know what's going on. I'm following the pattern as it's as it calls for. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's supposed to be, but... I don't know, it looks weird. But, yeah. This is going to be my travel project now that I'm done with the uh, Irish Mesh Cow. Because it's easy. It's on my Kindle. Or even on my phone. It's on my Kindle or Kindle app. So, sorry, I'm messing with my hair. Um, so, it's, I mean, sorry, I'm watching the time. Um, so, it's not, I don't know, it, it won't be that bad traveling. I've just, I've been use, knitting it here, and now it's going to be switched over. So, yep, that's what I'm, and it's in my superhero bag. Look at that. Yeah. I'm going to be cool. Cuckoo kachoo, man. So, yeah, that's what I'm knitting on. I'm just now putting on some rows on the 198 yards, which, just a quick reminder, I'm doing it, I'm, it's 198 yards of heaven. Uh, it's also a three pattern. Um, 
it is being done in the Blue Moon Fiber Arts Silky Socks That Rock. Um, in the Mad, Mad Heart U colorway. But I've only done a couple rows this morning. And I, I mean, I plan to do more once, once I dive into more Hannibal. And hopefully that will cheer me up a little bit. I'm also binge watching Eureka, so once I'm once I'm finally caught up on Hannibal, which is soon, I only have three more episodes. Um, I'll be binge watching Eureka, or maybe Newsroom. I have now HBO, so I have HBO on demand. So maybe I'll do some Newsroom. I've been wanting to watch that because it's Aaron Sorkin, baby. All right, nails. During the last recording, I completely skipped it again. Can't believe I did that. So on my nails, the last time I believe you had bridal veil, one of my new A Englands, right? So I had to take that off because I had, I was, I was going to a job fair, so I was going somewhere where black hol holo nail polish would not have been really appreciated so um, I took that off put some nail foundation to make them look like manicure hands um, for that day and then that night I kind of sit I buff them down the layer and put on some some Zoya that I it would didn't last that long because I picked them off because it was still too thick um, so I'm not, I still consider that an untried. If I pick it at the on the first day, not gonna happen. So my my nails were pretty um, with all the acetone from changing the manicure and you know do picking it off. It just my nails were finally like I'm done. I, I'm I'm not good. I want to cower in my little hole and be like peely and disgusting and thin. So. I put some Vita Gel nail strengthener, cured it, put a top, put a gel top coat, cured it, and it lasted a good long week. It was a nice shiny substitute, and it, it lasted for about a week until I peeled it off. So, I'm, I peeled it off because of stress, not not because of it was too thick. It was so. Um, I moisturize and massively moisture to put on the Vita Gel Strengthener again. Um, so I'm doing some gel manicures so that my nails can outgrow. So I put on a shade that I've already done before. See, the blending is so much better here. So this is Jelly Sher Sherbert by Sen Sensation. I've done this before. Um, I just figure it's nice and springy and Easter time. So. By the way, happy Easter if you celebrate. Um, so I, I really wish you could see the sparkle. It's very in-depth. But I nubbin my nails, put on some put on some gel. And that's gonna last me a good two weeks. Which I'm already, I'm already getting bored with the color. I know. It's awful. But maybe I'll I'll put some fairy some trying to glaze fairy dust over it to make me be like, ooh, pretty, ooh, pretty. Or do some topper. So I don't get bored with it. So. And then last week, so now I'm going to be doing pedicures. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try to do more regular pedicures. So if you have things about toes, look away for the next five minutes or so, okay? So, um, last time I had chinchilla and I didn't photograph it, be and I didn't show it because I didn't want to raise my my foot, but it just, when I, when finally when I went out with my digital camera and went outside to photograph it, I noticed all the brush strokes and the bald spots, and I'm like, ugh. And that's the same here. So I'm still kinda getting used to doing my nails bending over. But I definitely cost efficient. It is more cost efficient to do pedicures myself than to 
even though I love the pedicure chairs brrr, and them doing it for me and I don't have to bend down it just it would I save more money if I do it myself and I can use my nail polish the place I go to kind of gives me the evil eye if I bring my nail polish I know I really should find a better one but it's less it's not as expensive <laughs> still twenty dollars plus tip but um, it's and it's just down the street for me and I, I just I haven't found a good you know, place that is local and doesn't give me the evil eye if I bring my own you know like they the last time I was there there when I was there they charged me sorry I'm not looking at the light. they charged me for the second color anyway so I'm just gonna do it myself I don't charge myself I don't have to tip myself I don't have to make conversation so because I like just being quiet sometimes so anyway so I'm still working on it so but I am gonna try to up my foot so and if you remember these are one of the nail polishes that a viewer gave to me thank you um this is called Collins Avenue. It's like a neon orange. The perfect. I swear, whenever I have the professor choose, he always picks like the brightest colors. And if I have a green with something else, he's like green. Surprisingly enough, though, he chose the orange over the green this time around. Because it was it was gonna either be the gummy green from Hard Candy, because I wanted like a nice speckle. Or this orange because I couldn't decide between the two. And he's like orange, and I'm like, weirdo. Okay. So, but this, so just like the light teal, this was a year ago. Just about a year ago, maybe less. Eight months. I don't remember. Um, I tried the teal that was in the package, and it was streaky on my nails. Well, it this was kind of streaky on my toenails too. I thought it was going alright, but if you look really closely, there's bald spots and you can see the brush strokes. And I know neons are picky, so I'm not taking it personally, but meh. So, alright, toe squigglies. See? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> So you can kind of see there's a bald spot right there. So, but I definitely need to get a better scrub. Pedicure scrub. Let's see. So, but I'm getting better in cleanup. Because I'm actually cleaning up. Hmm. Toes! But if you look really closely, you can kind of see the brush strokes. Like, there's still, I still need to clean up right here. And there's some bald spots on the side. But, you know, I'm getting better. You know, practice makes perfect. Seriously. I'm get, I'm doing really, I'm getting much better at my brush strokes on my nails. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. That was embarrassing. Anyway. Nails, look. So, it's a nice... And it's orange for the giants, right? So it's nice and neon. Okay. So that is what's on my nails. Yay! Books. Okay. So I'm slow in reading books. Right now I'm reading Lost in a Good Book by Jasper Ford. This is the second of the Thursday Next books. Um, if you heard me read about the air affair, this is that's the first book. This is the second book. So it's really good. I if you liked Air Affair, keep reading. This is good. I'm also I had listened, finished listening to Dangerous Women, which is a sh collection of short stories edited by G George R. R. Martin and George Dozier or something like that. I didn't like it very much. It wasn't. For a collection of what's supposed to be powerful, strong women, it wasn't good. 
I mean, it was mostly, most of the stories were by men, which is fine. Men can write very strong, good women characters, but they made them more femme fatales that made men fight over each other, fight over her. And it was just, it wasn't that good. I didn't like it very much. Um, so now I'm reading Good Omens by Terry Patchett and Neil Gaiman, which is one of the, one of my book club books. So, yay! I'm excited. It's, it's enjoyable so far. I'm only about 10% in, so, yeah. Um, so that's what I'm reading right now. I'm, I'm kind of slow, slow in the reading right now because now that I'm able to sit down during my commute on the bus, I've been falling asleep in the morning. Oops. Yeah. What is Seven. Let's see. That's books. I already told you about my nails. <gasps> my guilty parade of pleasures. So, I didn't go too crazy this time around, okay? I was good. No yarn. <laughs> but I did get, so Sally, Sally's Beauty was having a sale. And it was two for, buy two, get one free. So, I got, and I, they have a really, they have an assortment of gel, gel polish. So, I really want to expand my gel polish collection because I'm getting bored with all of it. I also wanted some nice neutrals. Like, I only have a light pink, that's all. So, as one of my frees, I got Jellish Mini Never Too Gray. So, I may try this next time once my Jelly Sherbert is, is past its prime. And then, um, I got two of the new China Glaze gel polishes. So this is called for Audrey. And it's an as you can see the light is so much better here. It's a it's a Tiffany blue which you know will be nice and new. It's not as neutral as gray, but it's going to be a nice lighter touch. I don't have a lot of lighter touch gels. So this will be a nice rounding part of my collection. And then of course you can't go wrong with ruby pumps. Which you can't see the sparkle, but so what they did is they made the containers look like the nail polish, but then this is not the real nail polish, so it's not being it's not being shown in the light, which is great. Let's see, yeah. that's good. You can see it's not it's not see through. At least this is not see through. Mm -hmm. I like the brush. That's nice. It's a nice short brush. And anyway, I'm trying to make sure they're all tight. I want to make sure this one's good too. Yep. Oh, that's a nice green. So that's the one thing about gel polish you have to worry about is sun. If it gets in contact with the sun, it's gonna get thick and it's gonna get. It's gonna get. It's gonna start curing, so you have to make sure it's really tight. So that's what that's basically what I got. Um, I've been there. I don't know if Walgreens is still having a sensation ale sale. I it, I mean it's seven. It's only eight dollars. How can you go wrong with that? So I may get some more because I really enjoyed. I'm trying out a new application, painting application, where I'm loading the the paintbrush differently, and so I'm, you know, and I'm using, it's it's one, it's from the TFIMP board. Um, one of the members did a video of it, um, and it was it was a really good video. that detail you know exactly because there's so many there are really so many videos out there of how to paint your nails but this one I think really helped me in the loading of the brush because that's the thing is I either had too little or too much and it would flood the cuticles and then I'd have to do massive cleanup but this one really is nice and it, it you just have to put a dab of it you know you load you load your brush here 
I'll show you a little bit of it. So I was, so what I was doing is I was doing ba, 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 until I felt right, right? That's how some people, or some people will go straight up and clean like that, clean like that. There you go. This, what she does is she takes it and she just kind of unloads one side. It doesn't kind of spread out one side. And then she uses the other side to paint. And she puts a dab of it, just a dab, dab. She puts a little bit here. She puts a little bit on the base of the nail in the middle. Pa. And then what I do is I like to clean out a little bit extra. And then foof to the in the middle, to the side, to the side. And then she likes to even it out. I like to even it out too. But some polishes are not very good with that, you know? So, but see how it's not coming, I mean, it depends on the polish, of course. Like, Essie runs like no other. Julep, depending on the, the type, will run. Like, it'll run down that long wand that it has. It's that, it's that, <laughs> I like to call it the polish poop, where it just, slides right down but that was too much um but basically i mean it even works with julep too so so basically you fan it out like that you only do one side i sometimes will do the other side just a little bit so it doesn't flood a little depending on the nail polish and then you turn it over so that the one that you fanned out is there and then you dab a little bit on the on the base, pop. Oops. Oops. Don't come. Actually, it does come off. Let me see. Okay. So again, you fan it out like this, like that, and then I take a little bit off from the top, turn it around, and then you dab a little bit on there, and then I like to take off a little bit, and then kind of inch in and do vroom, vroom, vroom. and I don't have any cleanup. Of course I'm taking this right off. <laughs> Aw, now I have an orange cuticle. Oh well, it'll come off. So, see? See what I'm talking about? It's like amazing. I praise her. Praise her every day. Never do my nails. I'm like, oh my god! It make, it's like that light bulb moment. You know that light bulb moment? You know that moment when you finally get something? And this was a year of practicing and getting a little bit better with my brush strokes and whatnot. But like this... It came at the right moment. It really did come at the right moment because it was like I had the practice. I had the understanding of cleanup. Let me get back. <laughs> I had the understanding of cleanup and and understanding of brush strokes and whatnot. And I practice and practice and I don't have the shaky hand anymore. But now that I understand how to load the brush and being able to put enough of the polish on there to cover it, I have the nice thin layers not the thick layers but the nice thin layers it makes more sense but again it takes a lot of practice i do have to say it does understanding and and being able to understand and practice yeah now i have orange poop on the sides. It's like, if you want to look, if you can kind of see, you can see the orange on the side. Yeah. Let's see, that's where cleanup goes. Meh. I don't care. Um, so I did parade. I just did a short example of nail polishing. Um, I know that was just disgusting. I just licked my finger. Um, 
Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as you obviously know, I have a kitty. Her name is Teddy. I got her last weekend. Um, she's, she's not, she, I know she's basically hiding under the bed, but basically it's her nap. It's night for her. So she's a nocturnal vampire cat. She'll come out probably later on in the day. Or once I coax her out with our, with a toy that we had. We, we bought her this Millennium Falcon <laughs> cat toy. And she's, I, we realize she's part puppy. Because one, she loves attention. She just loves attention. She'll meow until she gets attention. And I haven't, I'm trying, like, during nighttime, I'm trying not to pet her when she meows like that so that she understands. No, you don't meow. You either come up on the bed or you leave us alone because we want to sleep. Um, <laughs> sometimes I'll forget and I'll play with her with the Millennium Falcon and then drop it and start, you know, going on. She's like, what are you doing? You are not playing with me. So she'll take... Not the stick. She loves the stick. The Millennium Falcon is just something that she holds on to. She takes the Millennium Falcon, puts it in her mouth, and walks over to us and, and drops it to her feet and smile. It's like oh, every time I can't stop laughing because most cats don't do that. I've had sat cat. I've taken care of cats. I have loved cats all my life, and. I've always run after them too, but I've never had a cat do that. I've never had a cat before, but I've never seen a cat do that. I mean, maybe hair bands, but not this. So I'm like, that's hilarious. So, yeah, it's hilarious. I'm amused. So, yeah, she's part puppy. Um, but she's under the bed now, so maybe you'll get, maybe you'll get a, a chance to see her next episode. Um, I already mentioned that, um, the professor is moved in. There's books everywhere. There's been some kinks, but it's overall going really well. We still, we're still kind of, it's kind of in between. He's basically living here, but he still, he still has a lot of stuff at his house. So, like his bookshelves and his bed, we're switching out. We're switching out my bed for his. His is younger, so mine has a little dip. It's like, <laughs> no, I love my bed. But his is fine too. His is comfy, so I will miss my bed. So, but there, there's been some kings understanding like grocery shopping and cleanliness but we're working it out we're working out chores we're working out he's he's amazing in regards to seeing you know listening and saying okay you like things clean I will try my best you know and there's some things that I'm just like you know what that's gonna be my life I'm gonna let it go so um just, and, but so far it's really it's, it's good so um you heard me say career. I can't say much about it because, of course, of it being on YouTube and public. Um, but, yeah, there, there's some tension going on at work. And it's just, it's, it's getting to the point where I think it's time. You know, the salt sucking. Um, just bringing up a lot of anger and stuff. So I'm... I'm really stepping up my game and you know, trying to um, find find more fulfilling stuff because when when my birthday came around it was kind of like an eye opening. I mean I know it's just thirty, but thirty is a it's kind of a milestone. I'm out of my twenties. I'm into my thirties. It's time to settle down, and I've been wanting to settle down for a while now. And you know the time has come. Things are meant to be as they're meant to be, and I was able to find someone that that is a partner that is amazing and um, now I'm just trying to find I don't, I'm not looking for a huge career I'm just trying to find something that you know just is not soul sucking 
<laughs> and it's more fulfilling, honestly, and more growth. So I'm just, you know, I, I was focused on the library stuff last year, and now it's kind of, it's kind of, let's see what the skills that I have and the, and the experience, the skills and the knowledge that I have. Let's see where I can, where I can go from here. Because right now, what, what I'm in is not fulfilling in regards to skills or anything. So it's, it's not, it's not conducive. You know, I'm, I'm much, I would be more fulfilled if I did something else. So. That's in and beyond. So that's basically what's going on. Um, as I said, we're gonna. I'm gonna try to do more recording now that things have settled down in life a little. And um, but again, next weekend is the professor's birthday, so next weekend we won't be recording. But uh, once May hits, it's gonna be a little bit more scheduled. So, and that's that is all, my friends. You can find me on Twitter at as J underscore crafty underscore geek. You can find me on Instagram where you see tons of pictures of Teddy as of right now <laughs> uh, as J crafty geek. Um, you can also find me on Ravelry as Knitterly Book Lady. Knitterly Book Lady. Nitty Dishes also has a Ravelry group. We are quiet as mice. So if you want to be that lion that wakes us up, go right on ahead. Um, chug in the bottom. So that's about it, you guys. I hope you have a happy Easter if you celebrate. A happy end of Passover if you celebrate. Or if it's just a regular Sunday. Have a great Sunday and have a great nitty digit, nitty digit day. Bye.